Hey guys, welcome back to week 28 of the MIT challenge, which is to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled at MIT. So I just recently finished 20 classes of the total 33 I'm going to be doing for the challenge. Uh, I'm working on three new classes now. I'm working on electromagnetics and applications, computer systems engineering, and macroeconomics. So I'm going to be working on those for probably about the next month and I'll be updating you guys on, on that progress. One of the questions I've been getting a lot is, uh, why am I not doing lots and lots of programming even though I'm doing a computer science degree? Now I actually am doing almost all of the programming assignments that an actual MIT student would do. So it isn't true that I'm just completely omitting that component from the MIT challenge. However, I think a more broad question is, why isn't there tons and tons of programming or why isn't there lots of big programming assignments when you're doing the MIT degree? Now there are a lot of programming assignments but maybe less so than you would otherwise think going into it because I think the popular notion is that computer science is mostly about programming and what I've learned through doing this program and just from talking to other people who do a lot of work in computer science is that computer science isn't really about computers it's about understanding complex systems and information and so a lot of people who go into a computer science degree uh, really get caught up in the idea that mostly what they're doing is learning how to program computers. And actually I would say, because I've done programming before going into this challenge, that the amount of new programming I'm learning how to do, meaning new techniques for becoming a much better programmer at a basic level, hasn't really gone up that much. Because a lot of what makes a good programmer isn't really the actual mathematics and algorithms and underpinnings of computer science, but just common sense design principles and systems of organization and really learning specific technologies like Ruby on Rails or Python or PHP or really understanding the specific applications you're going to be using it for. Whereas computer science is much more theoretical, much more abstract, but that also means it has much broader applicability than just learning Ruby on Rails or just learning Python. And so computer science is really about understanding how do you understand complex systems and systems that deal with information and what are general truths that you can reason about them. And so a lot of the classes I've been doing deal with a lot of mathematics, a lot of calculus, a lot of algebra, a lot of really understanding fundamental theorems rather than doing a lot of hands-on programming. Although there is that component in the MIT challenge and in the MIT computer science degree. Now, because of that, I think that that actually makes it a lot more interesting to study because they're much more broadly applicable. So you're not just learning something that will have very narrow use. You're learning things that apply to a lot of different, a lot of different areas. So if you're understanding complex systems and, and general truths for algorithms and searching, then you can understand really complicated domains. So, for example, a lot of computer science has broad applicability to understanding minds and consciousness just as it has to do with understanding cell phones and calculators. So I find this really this element of computer science that it's not really about computers, but really understanding complex systems and information is makes it much more interesting to study for me personally because even if I don't do a lot of computer programming projects after I'll still be able to use a lot of the ideas as metaphors and as ways of understanding things that I interact with in my daily life. So I've been working on a lot of programming assignments for the MIT challenge but I think for the typical person if what you're really interested in doing is just being able to program the basics, just being able to do programming. I don't think doing an MIT challenge of your own or doing a self-education just following the MIT curriculum is probably the best idea because you'll spend most of your time working on understanding how complex systems and information work and not doing a lot of practical projects. There's lots of books, lots of really cheap guides on the internet in order to understand programming if you want to learn a particular technology or a particular discipline. Um, however, if you already know some programming, so you want to just improve yourself as a programmer to really understand what you're doing at a deeper level, at a more abstract level, then I think the MIT challenge, I think doing the MIT courses for computer science would be really beneficial. So it really just depends on where you're at and what you're interested in doing and what you're interested in learning. But for me and where I am, I've really found it uh, educational and very interesting to learn about the more broader applications from life and consciousness and information and just general principles of how complex systems work rather than just learning necessarily a specific technology which I may or may not use. So thanks for joining me uh, on this update to the MIT challenge and I'll be updating you guys next week with future updates and more progress as I progress in the challenge.